Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Pawlicki. He's Jacob Liberta. And we're a Minnesota sports podcast. So if you're a sports fan, especially a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That'd be a huge help for us. And we're talking more Minnesota Timberwolves today. We're a week away from the draft now. And we're just going to go over some prospects still that the Wolves might have a chance of drafting. We went over Mark Williams last week. Um or earlier this week, I should say. And, you know, he's an intriguing prospect. He's probably our favorite. But uh, we've kind of realized that the odds of landing him are extremely likely. It's, pro- it's probably uh, a foregone conclusion he goes within the top 15. So let's talk about a power forward today, albeit he's a little undersized in terms of height at least. But let's talk about EJ Liddell, the talented power forward from Ohio State. What do you what do you think about EJ Liddell, Liberta? Yeah, I like him a lot. At first, I think the – like you said, what you know what's about him is the really undersized four, I think, because he only stands at six seven. So I was like, well, does that really not make a difference to this team we have right now as currently constructed as we went on in the Mark Williams video about is that it's like we have Cat and then nobody else. Like Jay mm-hmm. McDaniels kind of has some sneaky size, but obviously he's not not really thickly built. Mm-hmm. So like we we're kind of missing that element. I feel like Liddell oh, is he's kind of more of the same. But the thing is they said he's a pretty bouncy player. And as great athleticism, he kind of fits the new age four in the NBA, yeah. which is what we need. Albeit again, six seven, but he blocks a lot of shots. They they think his uh, scouts think his game can translate to the NBA as far as that goes, just because he had two and a half per game in Ohio State, and they think he can still remain at that level, um, even though it's just yeah, again, uh, probably a inch or two shorter than you'd like. But yeah. he also can space the floor too. He's a thirty eight percent three point shooter. And he, he plays with a lot of physicality when he wants to. He can still hold his own in the paint. So, really, it feels like a pretty good two-way player for us that, w- that could fit right into that four spot that we're really looking for as far as the floor spacer goes next to Cat with, uh, obviously, Vandal. That was the big problem last year was that he yeah. was good, but the only thing he couldn't do really was keep people out of the paint because he just had no outside shot whatsoever, which Liddell brings both the mid-range and an improved three-point shot to the to the table. So, I think this, this would be another – solid selection the Wolves could make at 19. And like you said, feels a little bit more realistic to be there than Mark Williams. So I was going to kind of ask you, and I think you sort of answered it. Do you think this, that EJ Liddell would slot in as a starter almost right away? Probably not right away. I don't think he'd start like night one, but I think it would be kind of one of those things that eventually it'd be like, oh, now all of a sudden he's starting where it's like 10, 20 games of the season where everybody kind of gets a feed under him. He gets uh, some minutes off the bench and then kind of settles into a role really. And then they probably test him out when the opportunity presents itself. And I don't think that would take too long in the season, mm-hmm. but I mean, you never really know for sure, but it, it kind of feels that way just because it's like, again, it's that guy that would open up the paint a lot more for cat, which is probably what you want along with Ant too, quite frankly, because you want Ant to be able to penetrate as much as possible. Cause that's yeah. uh, arguably the best part of his game is just being explosive at the rim. And the more you keep guys, honest really uh garden model and like let's say the corner on the on the wings or something then you just have more space for your two superstars to operate yeah and honestly like i feel like if he was six nine or six ten i feel like this would be a slam dunk type of pick because oh, absolutely i think he's talented enough to be just a perfect complimentary player to like you mentioned to ant and cat that you know he can space the floor he can open up more driving lanes for ant and you know if he can also find a way to rebound you know at a six foot seven height playing the power forward um, I mean, we had guys like Torian Prince, which I'm not exactly sure what his height is, but he's not like the tallest guy in the world either. He was playing a little power forward. Um, we've had undersized fours before. And, you know, if EJ Liddell is more of an effort type guy, kind of like Vando, um, and he can get rebounds just based off of energy and effort and positioning. Um, if he's able to rebound, you know, he's already a much better offensive player than Vando is. So um, if you can kind of, if he can kind of prove that he can rebound at the NBA level, then I'm all over that. You know, I don't, I don't care what his size is as long as he can get in there and help cat out in terms of rebounding. I still think having another center is the most ideal just because I think, you know, you need somebody that can come in off the bench that gives you some size, maybe a guy that plays next to cat. That's even bigger than cat takes a little pressure off of him, but I don't think this is a bad alternative just because this isn't a very, um, center heavy draft in terms of talent. So you're probably looking more at a power forward or even like a small forward um, being a very realistic option in this draft. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like we might add another stretch player here, uh, three or four, and kind of add to the ones we already got, which I don't think necessarily is a bad thing either. I think that's kind of the unusual versatility I think the Wolves brought to many teams last year that really Mm -hmm. they couldn't counter. Like I think that's what 
made us so good, at least offensively, I think, is that we had so many guys out there that were just mismatches for defenses where we could just really facilitate however we wanted to and just yeah. score buckets at will. I mean, I I think the more versatile you can get, the better. But like you said, I think it, it feels like the need more is to get a backup center and uh, spell cat a little bit. But, again, that kind of goes back to not only NBA drafting, but just drafting in general, not drafting for need and really drafting for the best player available. And Liddell feels like he'd probably be a good one there um, in the teens where we're picking if we stay in our original spot, that is. And another yeah. thing I like about Liddell, too, is this is an all-Big Ten player. He played, I think, three or four seasons at Ohio State. And, I mean, the guy – that's he or Ohio State ran through him, so, like, he knows what it's like to really – carry a team because Ohio State's always in the tournament. He was a big mm-hmm. he was a big part of what Chris Holtman has done these first few years and some successful seasons at Ohio State. So really there's there's a lot to like there too as far as experience and uh probably being ready for the NBA game now. Yeah and you if you keep D'Angelo Russell around you have that Ohio State connection. I mean granted yeah. they're years apart but um something interesting to think about as well. So I think he's definitely an intriguing player he probably wouldn't be first choice on my list, but I think if we if we walked away with him at the end of draft night, I think I could talk myself into getting excited about him just because of the talent he brings on the mm-hmm. offensive end. And, you know, if he can play a little bit of defense and he can grab some boards, I think he could turn out to be a really solid player. So do you have any other final thoughts on EJ Liddell? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you hit it on the head there. I, I don't think he'd be like my number one player I'd want most, but I think I could walk away, walk away just fine from – uh, the draft if that was our first round selection. So I think this is a guy who does have the upside of being a pro- probably starting four in the NBA. So I, that's exactly one of the main things we need right now. So I'd, I'd be all for it, at least giving it a chance. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but uh, definitely some interesting names. And even though we're not picking in the lottery, which is fantastic because we finally had a good season, um, the NBA draft still remains intriguing because I think there's some pretty decent players you can get in the middle of this first round. So It'll be interesting to see what the Wolves do, what Tim Connolly does, his first kind of, you know, move really as a as the president of basketball operations for the Timberwolves. So that will do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Please be sure to click the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. And let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think of EJ Liddell? Do you think he could slot into that starting four spot next to Cat? Do you see him as more of a bench player? Do you have no interest in him as in him as a Timberwolf? Uh, let us know your thoughts just in general about him or about any other draft prospects. And until next time, thanks for watching.